Black Out Loud Media Group. April is National Poetry Month. So this month I will have poets on as my special guests. First off, we have Monty Quinn. We had a wonderful conversation about poetry, being an author and mental health, mental health as a black man, mental health as a man in general. I hope you enjoy this conversation. This poem is called Relentless. Take a deep breath and focus. At the core of your frustration rests the reality that you are being stretched and prepared for greater. This frustration lives in the gray area where the unknown stands at the doorstep of destiny. We all encounter this frustration when we seek to move from a place of normalcy to a place of greater. There are times in the wavering belief of our potential and promise, doubt finds a way to invade the mind. But I believe that God opens doors of opportunity to grow us in ways that the imagination fails to see. There will be many things that you won't quite understand, many things that leave you searching for answers. In these moments, do not become your own worst enemy by continuing to try to find answers on your own. Sometimes God presents us with questions that only he can answer. It is your job to realize that and seek him. God desires your attention. It's up to you how painful the process becomes before he actually gets it. Learning how to get out of your own way presents the freedom needed to excel. Not everything that has you bound has a hold of you. Sometimes you have a hold of it. You will never know how great you can be until you push yourself towards it. Being uncomfortable is okay. Not knowing is perfectly fine. When you have the will and the determination to move past what the situation looks like and grab a hold of where the experience is taking you. That gray area where you feel lost is a space of opportunity. You can either run from it or embrace it. Choosing to accept the challenge and the uneasiness that accompanies it will eventually lead you towards growth and the reward of success. Always remember that light shines in the dark. Never allow what a situation looks like change how you shine through it. Never dim your light. You may not always get it right the first time, but keep trying until you do. Failure does not mean the end. It signifies the redirection, of course. Stop getting hung up on not accomplishing goals today. There is a purpose in the journey to achieve. Not everyone will appreciate what you bring to the table, especially those who have never held a seat at one. Special people and opportunities are often mishandled and undervalued due to the ignorance from which they are viewed. Don't allow someone else's inability to see your greatness discourage you from taking your seat. Remember why you are there. Remember that you belong. And above all, always stay relentless in your pursuit. Welcome back to another episode of the Brown Sugar Cafe podcast, the place where poetry meets conversation. I'm your host, Terrence B. Elmore. And before we get into today's topic, make sure you hit that plus sign so you don't miss an episode. Also, please subscribe to my blog, thebrownsugarcafe.blog. And if you find any value in this episode or any other episodes, make sure you leave a heartfelt review. So with that being said, let's get to it. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, today we have another special guest. Um, I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Uh, let the people know who you are. It's your boy, Mr. Monty Quinn from Cincinnati, Ohio. What's going on? Oh man, nothing much, brother. Uh, man, it's it's great to be talking to you. It's been a while since we talked, actually, years. Yeah. Uh, we keep in contact, you know, text message and whatever, but it's it's been a minute. Yeah, man. You know, we got to do better with that. But yeah, we we met in, yeah. at a book book fair. Right, Black Book Fair in South Carolina. Yeah, um, Black Ink. What was it called? Black Ink. Black Ink. Yeah, that's been a while. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's been a minute. So how you been? Oh uh, man, I've been great, man. Living life, taking care of my boys, man. Writing every day, you know. So just trying to stay busy. Yeah, it's Poetry Month, so I wanted to have some poets on this month and get a conversation going and the first season it was more so me but this season i've gone into having guests and stuff to try to spotlight other people and also 
you know, cause we all have different stories. We all have things that can inspire people. Yeah. So I figured it would be better, you know, to hear from other people than just me all the time. So I appreciate you coming on, taking the time out and being on the show. Absolutely. I appreciate you for having me, brother. How did you get started writing poetry? Ah, man, I started writing poetry in high school. Uh, you know, I was always one of those kids, man, that I never really said a lot, but my pen spoke volumes. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, man, I just wrote, I started writing and I haven't stopped. You never know what people, what talents people have until you actually talk to them. And you think that somebody, you know, because they never say a lot, they don't have a lot going on in their mind. But with me, the times that I'm quiet, I'm usually thinking about something, uh, especially being a, a writer, a poet. It's like things are going on in my mind. So I'm, I'm processing it and, and thinking. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm very so much guilty of that. What inspired you? to start writing poetry and is that something that still inspires you today yeah so my my, my inspiration to, to write poetry really came from the fact that i just wanted to be heard man like especially as a, a youth you know i didn't have a dad yeah. and, you know i was angry in a lot of ways man and i needed an out needed out man. i needed a way to get my feelings out and you know at that time i didn't realize that it was therapeutic right but right, I'm, yeah, just, I'm yeah. just young. I'm just trying to get my feelings out without, you know, fighting and beating up somebody. So, you know, I just started writing and, you know, then Facebook came along. Well, no, MySpace and then Facebook and all these. Yeah, know, I remember MySpace. Yeah, you know, all these different outlets came along, man. And, you know, I'm starting to put poetry up on those different, you know, social media outlets. And then from there, man, I got a... a uh, message one day from a young lady on Facebook and she says, hey, do you have books? And I was like, nah, I don't. And she said, if you ever wrote a book, I would buy it. And I put out a book six wow. months later. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, just like that. It, yeah, it takes all it takes is one person. Like, yeah. And that's all it takes, man. It takes somebody to, to press that button, man. And once once the, the, the switch gets cut on, it's on. And that's what it was for me, man. You know, she she said, hey, if you if you ever put out a book, I'd buy it. And then I had to go back because literally, man, I was putting two or three poems a day on Facebook. And, and so, wow. you know, I had to go back and look at all of that material and I took it all down. And literally, man, I had two books worth of material just on Facebook. And so my first book, honestly speaking, is two volumes. That's all Facebook posts. I wish I had met you earlier, man. <laughs> that's a that's a good idea like my second book i pulled a lot of the poems from my blog and if i wanted to do you know something in that that vein now i could just pull poems from my blog but you was like two a day that's man i commend you for that that's major and i was just writing because I, I was i felt like facebook was my muse you know i would go on facebook yeah. and i would see people post and i would literally write a poem in like five ten minutes based off somebody's post I would respond to people in poetry. It was crazy, dude. Man, that's a hey, dog, that's some good stuff, man. Cause I'm I'm sit, I'm trying to I'm sitting here thinking like, wow, here it is. Somebody like me, I, I'll just say I was I was playing with yeah. it, right? Wasn't really writing like I should. Yeah. And you dove right into it. You have a plethora of books. How many total do you have published Five. now? And I'm working on six. Five. Okay. So how did you get from one to six? Well, working on six, but how did you get to one to five? What was that process like putting those books out? And was there like a gap in between the books or did you just keep? Yeah, it was it was a small gap between each of them. So I think my first book I put out in 2011. And then I think I had another one in 2013. And then okay. I think I came back in 2015. So it was like every other year. And then um, I put my last book out last year. So yeah, no, the year before Christmas. Yeah, 20, 2021 okay. during Christmas. Yeah, I put my last book out. So it's been about a year, so I'm due. Yeah, yeah I'm due. Man, I applaud you, brother. I, th I think that I needed this episode more <laughs> than my listeners. Yeah. Cause I mean, just talking to you, you're, you're inspiring me. Like I've been kind of dragging my feet with this last book as you know because we've been talking about it for a while and you've been asking like you know how's it coming along but um i'm finished now thankfully so 
it'll be out soon. But when you find inspiration and you write things, you know, sometimes you don't. Well, for me, I don't think it's really going to go anywhere or do something with it because I have like multiple notebooks. And sometimes I write stuff on a scratch piece of paper and I need to get into voice recording because sometimes I'll be driving and I'll think of something. I'm like, I'll just write it down when I get home or when I stop. And you know how that goes. Most of the time you forget. So how do you find, I guess, balance with writing and processing your thoughts? The best thing that, that was ever created for me was the notes app. I promise. Oh, yeah. The best thing ever. <laughs> because I literally, man, I could be in like the middle of traffic. And something will come to me and I just have to pull over and jot it down before I lose the thought. And, you know, for me, you know, it's just making sure that I capture those moments. Right. It could, it could, it right, could be right. just one line, but that one line, I could come back to it later and it'll open up a whole 10, 10 lines. Right. And then if, yep. and so I just continue to build until I'm like, yep, that's it. That's it. And so, yeah, see, you know, and then and then I have moments where, you know, like I'll watch a TV show or I'll be in church or I'll be somewhere and something will hit me and I can just write the whole thing in that in that moment. So it just it just depends, man. But, you know, I just always try to capture the moment, you know, I've, I've actually forgotten more than I've written. Have you ever um, I, I do this sometime. Have you ever come across something that you wrote and it's like I wrote that? Yeah. Yeah, because my wife would do this thing where she would read something, and I'm like, "Man, that's pretty cool." And I'm like, "Where did you?" And she's like, "That's one of your poems." And I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I do that, and I actually, I actually have to go back and through my notes and take inventory because I, I do, I write so much, man, that I never want yeah. to like overlap things or you know use things or ideas the same somewhere else, you know. Because I do write right. so yeah. much. And it's just like, man, some of these things, like I said, are their own individual ideas. And then some of them right. I actually have to piece together to create what it is that I'm trying to you know, convey to the public. And so I have to go through there, take inventory, delete some things, you know, make sure that, OK, yes, I of course, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. But my notes app is my my saving grace mine too the first time i started using it i was like why wasn't i always using yeah, I this because i think when i had a, a android i was using um evernote yeah. or something but when i switched to iphone it was just you know and i was like wait a minute there's actually a notes app already on the phone so why am i not using this and i use it every day like i said even if it's like a thought or a line or maybe even two three words i, I i'm trying to jot it down so having multiple books, what was the process like from publishing your, your first book? You were on number six. Sounds like you probably have seven before you know it. Like, what was that process like from the first time to now? Well, the first time, uh, man, I spent thousands of dollars trying to get that book published. And, uh, oh, wow. yeah. you know, because I didn't know, you know, and, and that's yeah, right. Because throughout the process, I learned. But uh, I spent right. thousands of dollars for the first book, man. Just, you know, wanted to make sure everything was right. Editing, you know, cover art, you know, publishing, you know, buying, you know, my own copies to sell for myself. And it was just a it was a tedious process, but I learned a lot. Uh, now, you know, I, I love, you know, the Amazon platform, you know, right. and what you can do with it, you know, as a, as a self-published offer and man I, I it doesn't cost much you know I, I have people in place to help me with my cover art for you know and i got up and it's, it's a blessing man because those people don't even like seek me out much anymore to or charge me shall i say to do these things and so it's just like we've developed those kind of relationships and so oh, man, now yeah. the process for me is simple it's easy man i got it down to a science after you spent those those thousands and you published that book because the most important thing you know when it comes to being a creative or artist or whatever you want to whatever term you want to use poet writer is getting your work out there some people never start their first yeah. book or some people write their first book 
and they never put it out. True. True. So, I mean, and I've heard that story from people before about how they spent a lot of money publishing their first book and some people saw the return wasn't by a lot some people broke even some people lost but what i found i wonder if it, is this the same thing for you what i found is everybody i talked to that had that experience the only thing they regret is not knowing what they know now and maybe going a different route but the experience they still enjoy the experience it's like the learning process yeah, i enjoyed it it's what keeps me writing to be honest i don't write and i know this might sound crazy but i i don't write to make money I oh yeah i mean it's, it's not i could care less if i sold one book and i know that sounds crazy but I, it I doesn't. don't. I don't care at all. Like if nobody ever buys my book, I'll put it out on Amazon, and I'll let it sit there until the end of end of time. I don't care if nobody buys it, and that's not to be you know sound arrogant or nothing like that. But yeah, I love yeah. the process of writing. You know, the the creativity that I'm allowed to 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 formulate is like nothing else. It's the it's the ultimate Russian high for me. So it's like, here it is. If you want to get it, cool. But what I went through to create it was exhilarating for me. It would be cool to make a bunch of yeah. money off of whatever. But like you said, at the same time, it's like you created something, yeah. something that you're proud of, proud of, proud enough of to put out there for people to yeah. enjoy. And, you know, as a writer, I believe that everything we, we write is for somebody else, even though it's for us first but that people can take from it, people can grow from it, people can learn from it. Just you doing that, man, that's that's major, just sharing it with us, letting people know, you know, hey, I wrote this, it's out here, check it out, but the process is what, and I really feel like because you have that mindset, your books will go far. And like your name will go far. I mean, you have no choice but to. You got <laughs> working on six. You working on number six. <laughs> you working on number six. Yeah. But it's like I've always heard that. Like if you do things for the money, then you'll never be happy. You'll never be satisfied. But if it's the love of it for you, and if the passion for you, the the, the rush, then you continue writing books. And I and I look at I look at it in terms of a garden, man. I'm planting seeds. And eventually, you know, yeah, there'll there'll be enough rain in my life where those seeds will begin to grow. And you know, and oh, all see? it takes is for one person to see the flower, right? And then everybody yeah. will come to the garden and see what's growing there. And so, you know, I'm I know it'll happen one day, right? You know, somebody will pick it up and you know, like even at, at Black Ink, right? Nikki Giovanni was there. You know, she's from my hometown, Cincinnati, Ohio, zone fifteen. Like, yeah. Our birthdays are the yeah. same day. So, yeah. you know, it was just cool to be able to rub elbows with her for me, right? And to give her my books. Yeah. You know? I gave her all my books and I said, hey, you know, I'm from Cincinnati just like you. Like, you know, and I'm I'm chopping wood, you know, to eventually build a house like, like you, you know? And one day it'll happen. But, you know, I do. I have to get better at the whole marketing piece, right? Because I think, I think yeah. the thing for me is, and God has been working with me in this area, is being my biggest cheerleader like i like like when i was growing up like that that was a sign of like arrogance you know what i mean like always talk about yourself right so as a grown mm -hmm. so as a yeah. grown man now i really don't try to do that much i don't like to toot my own horn per se but to be who i ultimately would like to be right and be you know right. recognized for my work i have to kind of toot my own horn and say hey this yeah. is what I've done and this is why you should buy it because it's good, you know, and it's something that can help you or impact you in a way or open your mind to some things to where you begin to move differently in your life. Right. And so, you know, I'm, I'm getting more comfortable with it, but it has been a struggle for me over the years. I struggle with that, too. I know what you mean completely. And it's not arrogance. And I, you know, I was thinking about it like, like you, like you said as well, it's like, you don't want to come off as arrogant or cocky. I mean, we do have confidence, but it's like, when it comes to promoting your own stuff, you don't want to, you know, come off like right. that. And I'm so used to promoting everybody else's stuff. So I've been working on that and trying to, you know, let people know, because when people find out about stuff, even if, if it's somebody that you barely mm -hmm. know, they'll take some offense to it. Like, why you didn't tell right. me? 
And it's like, right. I mean, I didn't want to. And it's like, you could have told yeah. me. Like, I have um, this young lady I work with. Talk to her almost every day. Uh, she left and we connected on LinkedIn. And she looked at my page. She was like, you write poetry? And I'm like, yeah. She was like, I love poetry. Why you didn't tell me? I was like, I don't know. It never right. came up. That was the moment where I started kind of easing up and thinking about that. Like, it's not me being cocky. It's not me being arrogant. It's a way to yes. do things. So you can let somebody know you're an author, you're a poet, you're a writer, you have mm -hmm. books without being like, yeah, check my stuff out. And yeah, you know, I'm that guy. If you yeah. don't, <laughs> it, right. Exactly. <laughs> it's a way to yeah. do it. Especially when, I mean, when, when people meet you, they can tell the type of person you are and the presence you have when you let them know like, hey, I'm doing this or this is what I have going on. They'll be so supportive, it'll shock yeah. you. This is all about getting comfortable. One of the things I, that I think about and I've been thinking about recently, like for us to excel and us to grow, especially being writers and authors and poets is we have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yes because comfort and complacency and that sort of thing it, it like it stunts yeah, us grow. yeah because i think that we all could do so many different things but we limit ourselves by not even doing the simplest thing like hey i write poetry i'm a writer something as simple as that in a conversation could take us so far and going out and talking to people for me it's like it, i could i could talk about anything pretty much but when it comes to my stuff, I'm just now getting into the groove of saying, this is what I'm doing. This is what's going on. I created a barbecue page, getting comfortable telling people about that. I'm not trying to hide it, obviously, because it's on these platforms. Yeah. And I think I think that's my my thing, too. You know, I, I post and I just kind of let it float. You know, I, I'm not yeah. intentional with, you know, directing it to certain people or you know yeah. letting it be known more forcefully like hey this is what i'm doing like i'm just i just throw it out there and if somebody catches it cool if they don't yeah, yeah. i gotta get out of that habit yeah I, I mean one thing i found that we all should be doing and i kind of am doing this because since i have a blog but like getting together like an email mm -hmm. list because when you think about it, these other platforms we don't own them and so if they go away or kick us off how people gonna know about our stuff how people gonna see what we're doing and if that's out the only way to contact us and it kick us off or we gone they won't know how yeah. to find us because i remember that time when instagram and facebook crashed dog it crashed and that was it people lost money so speaking of social media how do you balance that social media poetry in real life <laughs> be honest with you brother i was i was try my best to be more intentional about Facebook and Instagram and Twitter yeah. and all these different uh, social media platforms. And, mm -hmm. you know, every year at the beginning of the year, man, I fast and um, I, I did a spiritual fast and God just told me like, get off social media. And so literally I've been off social media since January. Like I'm just now starting to get back into the flow of posting. Like I've posted something, I want to say five out of the seven days this week, you know? And so, you know, I'm trying to get back into it. I'm trying to become more open with everything that I do because I wear a lot of hats, man. I'm a real estate agent. I have two other businesses. I'm a writer. You know, I also do ministry. So it's just like I wear a ton of hats. I could use all of these platforms to promote all of those different things. And so I just have to do better with it. So, you know, I've had a lot of people in the last couple of days. It's funny you ask these questions that, you know, they've come to me like you. Like, I don't know that you own a cleaning business. I don't know that you have mm -hmm. books. I don't know that, you know, you're an executive pastor. I don't know that, you know, you you have all of these different businesses to where I can promote, yeah. you know? And it's just like, dude, I just have to be better. I just have to be better. Yeah, because I didn't know this stuff until we were talking in the pre-show, yeah. and I'm just like, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> you got a lot going on, brother. You got a lot going on. Yeah. And that's stuff that, and I'm speaking to myself, mm -hmm. too, like, we have to get more comfortable letting people know because somebody is depending on yeah. us to open like our with yeah. this 
with this podcast, it took me a long time to start this. I've been talking about it for a while, been on people podcasts, no problem. Hey, you want to be a guest? Cool, no problem. But when it came to me starting my own, I kind of drug mm-hmm. my feet. And then I was sitting there thinking about it. I was like, if I don't do this, who needs to hear this podcast that I'm missing if I don't create it? Of course, I believe that if God wants to get, get a message to somebody, he'll find another person. But why would I let that happen when I'm able to do it? So I thought about that and I just like, man, I'm going to just do it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just do it. Um, that's what I kept hearing. Man, my first couple of episodes, things weren't how I liked it. I kind of fine tuned it. But, you know, just like writing and publishing your book, it's like once you get into the rhythm of doing it and once you find out the things that are wrong or the little mistakes that you make, you can help somebody else, especially working on six books. If somebody's going through the writing process and they want to publish, you're definitely the person to have a, con- a conversation with. Conversation. Let me let me say something about that, bro. Yeah. We have to get out of the habit of withholding information from each other. I, yeah. I, I, I wholeheartedly despise the fact that we do that. If if, yeah. if I have something that I can offer to you, I'm going to give you that information. Because here's my thing: I believe that. What God has for me, and I just said this, I just posted this video earlier. What God has for me is for me. And what God yeah. has for you is for you. But how dare I withhold information from you so that you miss out on your blessing? How dare yep. I? And, and, yeah. and I, I've noticed that we as a people, we do that a lot. You know, we don't we don't want to yeah. see the next person walk into their blessing. So we'll withhold the information. No. And so, man, like, if anybody that's listening to this podcast thinks along those lines, I pray that God breaks that chain off your mind, man, and really releases that from you because that is ugly. We have we have to do yeah. better with helping one another. Yeah, it, it's sad to see. It. You don't want somebody to quote unquote shine better than you, so you know you're not going to tell them. Or you see people making mistakes, and then you could help them do it better. And this is the thing that I hate too: is well, I had it hard, so they're gonna have to figure it out. But the fact that you didn't have anybody to help you and you had it hard, you should be the person running to help other people, so they won't have to go through that. Yeah, and the, and the thing about shining, man, is it's enough darkness in this world. So you should be trying yeah. to help somebody else shine. It's so many layers to that too. What does it hurt you to point somebody in the right direction? What does it hurt you to show somebody a better way? Like you said, what God has for you is for you. What God has for me is for me. And me helping you is not going to take away from that. Actually, you might be messing messing up your next blessing. Thank you. Because I mean, if I pull you up and you surpass me, and then you pull me up to surpass you. We both climb. And people don't see it like that. People don't see it like that. Unfortunately. But that's a closed mind. Though. Yeah. That's a closed mind. A lot of people. Yeah. Who, that's you know, true. They just want to. They want to eat. But they don't want to help feed. Man. Yeah. Well, we can. Yeah. We can talk about that all day. <laughs> we can talk about that yes, long sir. time. Yes, sir. <laughs> so your um your well what are the titles of your book and there's one that i found that was the title was interesting Mm -hmm. it's thinking Thinking. yeah but the king part at the end is capitalized yes sir sir. so what was the inspiration behind that and why is the title written like that well it's it's kind of twofold right so uh, okay. first of all, you know, just thinking in general, right? I, I am a thinker, you know, like we were talking a little earlier, man, you know, I sit down and, you know, a lot of my day is geared towards processing my thoughts, working through my thoughts, you know? Yeah. Um, and then I also think along the lines of godliness. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking along the lines of a king, the king. That's why I capitalize all those letters, right? And, you know, like, with that book, God was really working on me in, in some spaces of my life where I was really being, I was starting to realize, it, you know, where it was like, okay. oh, okay, God, I see what you're doing. You know, I think one of the things that a lot of people fail to do is see how God operates in their lives and see and see yeah. how, you know, just the little things add up and how, how strategic God is with things. 
And so, you know, when I was writing that book, I, I was really starting to see how God was placing certain things in my life and giving me certain material to write about, right? And so, you know, when I when I when I had that title, or when it was given to me, shall I say, it was just like thinking. That's all I had. Like I'm just thinking. And then it came to me like I'm thinking king i'm thinking like a king i'm thinking along the lines of the king right because every idea that i had was god birth you know and so yeah. you know like even when i when i write about you know things of the world sex drugs mayhem murder death like i always try to bring those things back around to how god can operate and deliver in those situations you know what i'm saying because yeah yeah i've noticed yeah, that because yeah it's, it's 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 needed it's necessary you know i think we glorify those things so much but we also have to realize that you know in all things god works he he's there and so you know for me it's i always try to incorporate that within the themes of my books man there's an example our writings and things there when we share them they're intended to help somebody yeah. And if you could be a light in a dark situation, I mean, that can go far. Just somebody seeing something, like you said, that's glorified. But in reading your poetry, there's another way. I went through this, but there's a light in this. And that was another thing that I recently thought about. Well, somebody said it, a poet said it. You know, some people, when they they write poems and they share poems um especially with like spoken word it's like all this grief and as a poet as well you understand that we all write different things we all have different things we want to share and we all in different things so if you're writing all these poems you're taking your reader with you or the person listening with you you might have left that place and it's just a poem now but you're taking them with you so you always have to offer some sort of relief at the end. You're bringing them down, you're bringing down, but remember to bring them up. If it's not in that same poem, make sure it's the next poem. Cause some people are, are impasse and you go spitting off a poem about things that happened to you. And then it's like, that's the end. They're sitting with that. Yeah, man, I, I, I definitely, I want to take you on a journey, right? I want you, I right. want you to be able and it's crazy, bro, because like when I was writing on Facebook, people used to like inbox me and be like, get out my house. They used to tell me that all the time. <laughs> get out my house. Like, I, I don't like you today. Like, stay out of my house. And I'm like, look, I'm not trying to be in your house, but life is life. It's a circle, bro. It comes back around. You yeah, know, yeah. everything, there's nothing new under the sun. We all go through the same None. trials and tribulations just in different ways you know but but at its yeah. core it's the same you know and so when i'm writing about love or heartbreak or a man cheating on his wife or a woman cheating on her husband or you know murders suicide any of these things this is life these are things that we all readily experience every day right and so you know i do i do want to write in a way that it's it's very very personal you know where it's like oh right. man like i really felt that like that's my experience because i feel like if i can grab you in that way then you know yeah. you'll really grab the message that i'm really trying to convey once it's all said and done and so you know to your point it's always uh important to have that for me to have that guy element in everything that i write because a lot of the things yeah. that I write about, you know, God in it. So I gotta bring, I gotta bring yeah. you back and let you know, like, at the end of the, this is what means the most to me, right? That God, that God, yeah, and that I know from my life that he, he's, he's a keeper, he's a, he's a healer, you know, he's, he's the one that carries me when I can't carry myself. Like all of these things. I have yeah. to I have to give that because he's given me a platform to speak on all this other stuff. So how dare I leave him out of it? You no. Know? Ooh, yeah, man, that's yeah. good. So yeah, yeah. I'm definitely, I'm definitely wow. always. You know, that piece will always be in my book. Oh. Whatever our talents are, anything that we do, 
when it reaches people that's our ministry like writing poetry singing whatever because when you do things you're supposed to do it with excellence yeah this is a, man, this is a really yeah. good conversation yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm those, those talents, man, they're, they're, we call them gifts we call them gifts and, yeah and gifts right for a reason so, yeah you know, I tell anybody like, okay, this is a gift. When you get, when you have a gift, you present it, present. Right. Here's a present that I'm giving to you. Here's a gift, right? It's my gift, but I'm gifting it to you, which is now a present. And so, you know, if I'm giving this off, you know, I, I have to give it an excellence, but I have a responsibility with the gift as well. You know what I mean? Right. Because yeah. I, I have a responsibility yeah. with the gift because if I give you a gift, that you don't like then it's no longer a present to you you don't you don't want it now it's just something that i've just exchanged and so you know it's my it's, i have a responsibility with that you know so it's like it's like me giving you a gift and you're like what you giving me this for it's like you like like me yeah. like, I, I like watching right. I like cologne i like things like that so don't go buy me you know a necklace i don't like necklaces why would you buy me a necklace you know what I mean? It's the same thing as a writer, right? If we're writing, we need to write in ways that, you know, can reach our audience, the audience that we're trying to reach, right? We, and so right. it's like, why would I write a children's book for a grown adult? Yeah. So, I mean, we have to curtail it to, to meet what we're trying to, to reach. And so, you know, man, I, I try my best to do that. I try my best to always, you know, present in a way that is tasteful. You know, like if you go back yeah. and read my first book, though, like I got some stuff in there, Doc. You know? <laughs> I got some stuff in there where it was like, oh, like I went back and read it. I yeah. Back and read it. I was like, yeah. I was young, dumb, full of calm. Ooh, like, man. Like I had sex on the brain. I'm telling you, it's a, it's a, yeah. Book. yeah. I wish I could go back and take it out. But it's, it's my journey, it's my story. So, right, you know, right, just, right, right, right. I thank God for it, but yeah, bro. Ooh, I was... <laughs> <laughs> it was tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I, I read some of it. Um, the sample that was on um Amazon. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of books, you're working on yes. the sixth book. What? What's the title? If you have one yet, and what is it about? <laughs> it's called Deconstructing My Thoughts. It's it's a book. Okay. Man, um, uh, let's see. Twenty twenty two was maybe the roughest year of my life. Um, I was uh, suffering with, you know, some depressing thoughts. I'm not going to claim depression. I'm just going to say I had depressing thoughts. Um, right. And I was really uh, I was going through a court battle, man, with my ex wife. Yeah. See my kid, and it was rough, man. You know, I was working in corporate America and, you know, how everything went after COVID, you know, everybody had triple the work. And, you know, it's just so many things on my plate, man. And my mental was was all over the place, man. And, you know, that that year, bro, I mean, I lost my relationship with my lady at the time. Uh, great woman, great woman. But I lost that relationship because I was just all over the place doing stuff. I ain't had no business. Yeah. And. I, I had to make a change and so I took a leave of absence from work let me show you how God worked I took an absence from work leave of absence from work because I just needed a minute and in order for me to take that leave of absence I had to go see a therapist okay, I yeah. had never wanted to see a therapist in my life I actually swore against it you know like most black men we'd be like ah oh, man I'm good I'm yeah, good yeah. I need to talk to a therapist yeah, and yeah. Speak. but I had to go because the FMLA said I had to, right? You know, the, the paperwork. So I went and started talking to this therapist, great therapist, man. I love her to death. Still talk to her today. And um, I began to learn some things about myself. And so what I began to do is document my therapy session. And, and okay. as I started documenting my therapy sessions, God showed me that right now I'm deconstructing your thoughts. Everything that you thought you knew about yourself, everything that you believed yourself to be, I'm tearing it all away, tearing it up. And so I said, huh, 
I'll, I'll title my book Deconstructing My Thoughts. And so yeah. literally, man, for the last year and a half now, man, I, I go to therapy on Wednesday. I sit down with my therapist and she kind of works through my thoughts and, you know, helps me really think about me as a man, me as a father, um, me as a young man and, and, and why I moved the way that I moved and why I've done some of the things that I've done and why I carry so much pride and why I had this wall built up. Um, just a just a, yeah. a lot of different things, man. And I said to myself, I would be selfish to keep all of this to myself because there's a lot of men who are struggling, men and women, but especially men who are struggling in yeah. this place of, you know, doubt and frustration and pain and don't know how to fully like get it out. Right. And so, you know, yeah. I took I took on this charge, man, of being so transparent with myself that I'm praying and I'm hoping that when I put this book out, man, that there will be men who pull themselves back from the ledge because I, I, I and I'll, and I'll be transparent with you, bro. I had some suicidal moments, you know, yeah. like, uh, and I write about it in a book, you know, I sat on the, I sat on the edge of my bed, bro, with a loaded nine millimeter, man. And I thought about that thing for a long time, you know, and the only thing that really kept me from, actually pulling that trigger is I want to break the generational curse of my kids not having a dad you know like I didn't have a dad and so you know yeah. I've always made a vow to myself that you know I'll be the best dad I could be and in that moment the one thing that kept me from pulling the trigger was the fact that if I killed myself my kids would be in the same exact situation that I was and I had vowed to myself that I would never allow it to happen and so you know I, I talk about all these things in the book, man, just to just yeah. to let other men know, like, hey, you ain't by yourself. Dog. And there's ways to to really, you know, tear down that wall without demasculizing yourself. Like, like, like we, we we're masculine guys, man. We think about this thing. We're hard. We're tough, and we feel like if we talk, yeah, yeah, that that, that makes us soft. And the thing soft, is, soft, like, yeah. It takes a real man to be able to open his mouth and say, I have a problem. Or, or, that, I, or that, that I'm hurt. That's true. Or that I'm broken. Or that I just don't know. You know, like, but we walk, we, we carry ourselves with so much pride, man. And the word tells us that pride comes before the fall. And so, you yep. know, we're, we're carrying ourselves with all this pride and all this 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 negative energy because pride is it is not good energy because what it does it causes right. us to alienate the ones that we love you know it causes us to hurt people hurt people hurt people and so you know yeah I've, I've learned all these things man in the last 18 months man that has really opened my eyes to me and i'm still working through it right but as i work through it i continue to write man and i'm and i'm praying uh that when I when I release this book, man, that it will be one of the most impactful books of 2023 or 2024, whenever God releases it. You know what I mean? Like I'm really I'm really excited about it. That book is needed. I've had some conversation with <laughs> men, and it's hard to have that that space of vulnerability. I mean, we got our boys and stuff, but sometimes you know some men may not feel like they're able to tell their boys what's going on because you don't want to get clowned but nine times out of ten they're going through something too but they're just not comfortable enough to share it with you because like you say we've been taught since we were little you fall down get up walk it off your leg could be half broke but you got to walk it off you know or don't cry yeah that <laughs> don't cry and you grow up and become a grown man that doesn't cry, hold stuff in, get injured mentally, emotionally, but then you just get up and walk it off. You don't process. You don't talk to anybody about it because that's what we're taught. We're taught to, to be strong. But how can you be strong if you don't face your problems and face your what's bothering you? Too? Because I, I know people personally, you know, men that took their lives because they didn't have anybody to talk to and all this stuff bottled up and they had families wife kids and things like that but it just it became too much and they didn't feel like they could talk to anybody so i always try to tell 
know anybody I know or come across like if you need somebody to talk to you can reach out to me I'm here even if you just need an ear I don't have to say anything maybe you just need to blow off some steam or get it out but find somebody or especially therapy if if you're at that point find somebody to talk to I know it's hard for us to find safe spaces and people to talk to especially other men and maybe it's not hard maybe it comes back to what we talked about earlier is is opening your mouth and saying something bro i'm i'm feeling like this man i don't have it all together i don't know what i'm gonna do this is going on i just need somebody to talk to and if they're really your boys your friends they you know them. they'll be like they yeah and then that starts a cycle and it starts a whole conversation and then they start telling you about stuff they've been going through that you didn't know about yeah, and like you one of, one of the go ahead things man that 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 we don't realize is that we're not alone i think you know no. like, as kids man we're taught to like you said to not cry or to not you know be emotional about things but ultimately what that does is it stymies us in our communication right because what, yeah. what, what, it, yeah. what, what you're telling me is if i'm hurting not to acknowledge it you know right and so now as a grown man i have a woman or i have kids and i don't know how to properly love them because in in love it takes communication i have to communicate i have to be able to yeah. demonstrate right that i love you right but you're telling me that that is soft for that is not something that is right for a man to walk in you know, and so now here I am, I'm 40, 41, 42 years old, got kids and a woman. And it's like, I can't properly love them the way that they need to be loved because all of my life I've been told that, nah, we don't walk in that space. This is what a man yeah. does. And, 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 and really what happens is where we're told that we're supposed to be providers, but that that's only in terms of money. You money know? yep we're not told yep. that a provider is someone who provides mentally and emotionally a provider yeah. across the board right and so now we're stuck in in this mud of you know i'm a man but i can't walk in it right and it's like okay cool so are you really a man or are you, are you just you know what somebody has told you what a man is you know are you really a mm. man yeah you know are you really someone who is dependable are you really someone who is uh, a, a communicator are you really someone who is a true yeah. lover of themselves and others you know are you are you someone that a, a woman can depend on and is safe with you know have you created an, an environment that is healthy where everybody can thrive, yeah not just you you know like these are things that we're not taught as as young men especially when you come from my background of not having a man to pattern that for you right and so now you know i'm about to be 42 years old bro and i can honestly say that in this last 18 months i've learned more about being a man than i learned in the first 40 years of my life you know what i mean and so it's it's one yeah. of those deals bro it's like but it was all because I just had this pride, right? I built up this wall because yeah, you know, yeah. I wanted a dad and I didn't have one. And so to protect my feelings, I built this wall up and I refused to succumb to what other people thought of me. But at the same time, I didn't even know who the hell I was. So so not yeah, only am I yeah. fighting them, but I'm fighting myself, right? It's heavy. So, you know, when we, when we really realize, like, I am my worst enemy. I'm, I'm trying to fight you off or I'm trying to prove myself to you and I haven't proven myself to me. I'm the one that's keeping me from being my best. I'm the one that's keeping me from, yep. you know, having the things that I want to have. Part the, the one thing for me that I realized, bro, is I've been seeking love all my life. And when I've had it, I've pushed it away because the one love that I desire to have pushed me away. And so, bro, like I just been going through all of these things, right? And so I, I said, I have to be able to put this on paper 
So yeah, when yeah. A, another man who's gone through the same cycle that I've been through, and even if he hasn't been through that cycle, but he still developed these bad habits and these bad characteristics or these bad traits, he can look at my story and be like, you know what? That's me. And yeah. so now I need to check myself. Because the one thing that I will not allow to happen is that my children grow up to repeat my mistakes. So I have to I have to own that I failed in certain areas of my life so that I can impart into them the correct things, the right things. And so that's yeah. what I'm doing. And that's what I hope to accomplish with this next book. Bro. You're going to accomplish it. I mean, that. Yeah, you you going to and 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 you know I'm going to make sure I can do whatever I can do to make sure that you accomplish that because that is that is so needed. That's major, especially right now. We need that. We need that. And with a book, it could be anywhere and somebody come across it. It's because I think I look at a book like an extension. I've heard stories of people finding books that somebody published years ago, and then it's like, who is this person? And then they get in contact with them and then it's like, hey, could you come speak at this place or whatever? And then you hear the stories about how many lives have been touched and how many lives have been changed all because this person wrote a book, put it out there. Somebody found it and they were able to share their story. So what you're doing is is very important. And I, I commend you for that. I, I appreciate you for that and, and, and coming on here and talking about that. This is we really need that especially in our community we we really need something like that because like you said it doesn't just affect us but it affects our women and children and then if it's not addressed it continues on a cycle generational curses and we need to do what we can to break those and it comes from having conversations it's, like i said i really appreciate you sharing your story writing this book i'm looking forward Thank to you, it brother. coming out this was an awesome way to end wow i enjoy being on your podcast brother thank you for uh giving me this platform to just be able to speak a little bit man i love what you're doing man and i pray god continues to increase your your platform and increase your life in general bro um you know you're necessary like i said you're a gift to the to the people you know and uh you know i see nothing but great things going forward for you and, and, and your platform Oh man, I I appreciate that. I, I I really appreciate that. I appreciate you taking the time to come on, and and I'm looking forward to the great things that you're gonna do. We're gonna, yeah, you know, we, we gotta help encourage right. each other. Yeah, we got a collab. We got um, book the right. man. We gonna make that happen, man. <laughs> we definitely gonna make that happen, man. I appreciate you coming on, man. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for just taking the time out you know to be a yeah. part of the show this is man this was a really good conversation hopefully my listeners got something from it i got a lot from it so i know they will so i really really appreciate you uh before i let you go is there like how can the people reach yeah, you is so there, you my, know? my website is authormoneyqueen.com you can uh, get all of my books there uh, you can also find them on Amazon, but you know I prefer that you go to my website, give me a little traffic. Uh, you you can also find of course. me on uh, Instagram, Monty underscore Quinn seven oh seven, and on uh, Facebook, Monty Quinn. So yeah, man, I'm I'm out there. You know, if you got any questions, man, you can definitely reach out to me through one of those platforms, and and yeah, man, I'll definitely respond. All right, well, I appreciate you being on once again. And uh, to all my listeners, remember, keep pushing forward. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Brown Sugar Cafe podcast. Once again, I'm your host, Terrence B. Elmore, and this is the place where poetry meets conversation. Hit that follow button and turn on your notifications so you won't miss an episode. Check out my blog, thebrownsugarcafe.blog. Also connect with me on Instagram at the Brown Sugar Cafe. Hope you enjoyed this episode and as always remember, keep pushing forward.